Hi everyone, welcome back to the Indoor Garden Series. A question I've been asked a lot lately is how to water my indoor vegetable garden. This can be very tricky and it's very easy to get tripped up here. Not to know when to water, how much to water, so you have a productive vegetable garden. Well today I'm going to share with you five pitfalls to avoid when it comes to watering your indoor veggies so you get lots of veggies inside this winter. Pitfall number one to avoid is not checking on your garden daily. Watering needs of each garden vary depending on the location that you have it growing, the temperature, the containers that you're growing in, and the soil that you're growing it into. Now I know this sounds confusing, but there's some clues that you can look for. If you're not checking on your garden daily, you're going to miss these clues. The first clue to look for when you're determining if your garden needs water is the color of the soil. For example, Tiny Tim here has a very light brown soil, which indicates the soil is starting to dry out. On the other hand, my little microgreen smart pot over here has nice dark brown soil, indicating that there's really good moisture content in here, and this container does not need water. Clue number two is the weight of the container. The heavier container here indicates there's more moisture content in the soil, doesn't need water. A lighter weight container means that the soil is starting to dry out and it's time to water. So when you're checking your garden every single day, you're noticing these clues and you know when it's time to water your plants. Pitfall number two is not providing your plants adequate drainage. Now what happens when your plants don't have good drainage? It can lead to waterlogged plants, the roots can't breathe, can lead to fungal diseases and mold, all kinds of problems when you don't have good drainage in your pots. Worst of all, your plants can die. So you need to plant your vegetable seedlings in containers that have good drainage. The smart pots are a classic example of this. The fabric, not only is it super durable, it's aerated. The, the water drains out the sides and also drains out the bottoms. But no matter what container you use, it needs to have holes in the bottom for drainage. A couple other great examples of containers that have excellent drainage are these cow pots. Water drains right through here into the drip tray and these little six packs, holes in the bottom for drainage. An example of a container that you would not want to use is like a glass jar, a vase, or a hard sided container that doesn't have holes for drainage. Now I've also had a ton of questions here about should I use plant saucers or drip trays under my plants. And yes, a resounding yes to that because look what happens if you don't. All the water that you're watering your plants in is going to drain all over your cabinet or all over your grow lights, make a big mess, and it's just not a good idea to do that in the house. So I've got these drip trays here under my one gallon smart pots. These are an eight inch size and I put the link in the video description so you know exactly where to purchase these that work really well. I also like these square drip trays which are super handy for watering your plants. We'll get to more about how to water in just a moment. All the resources for you are over at CaliKimGardenAndHome.com, including the Indoor Garden Seed Collection and the Indoor Garden Mini Kit, which has a seed collection and three of the CaliKim One Gallon Smart Pots. Get 25% off with the code INDOORGARDEN. All the supplies are linked in the video description. Pitfall number three is overwatering. By far the biggest mistake most gardeners make. We just love our plants so much, we overlove them, we just want to make sure they're okay, so any problem we see, we pour the water on, and that causes all kinds of other problems like fungus gnats, mold, root rot. It can cause your plants literally to die. You can love them to death. So here's how to avoid that. Again, check in your garden daily. You want to go through, take a look at your plants, and only water them when they need it. So use your finger here as a moisture meter, and always let the first inch or two of the soil dry out. That's when you want to water. So I'll show you an example right here on Tiny Tim. You can see the top of the soil is looking a little bit dry. So I'm going to poke my finger in here about an inch or so. If it feels dry, you need to water. You can even pull up just a little bit of soil here. See how dry and crumbly that soil is? So it's time to water your plant, not before then. Pitfall to avoid number four is underwatering. Forgetting to water your plants can lead to all kinds of problems like wilted, stunted growth, dried leaves, nutrient deficiencies, and ultimately, plant death. Our hearts all absolutely sink when we see our plants looking like this. So the best thing you can do is just have a daily routine of checking on your plants so this doesn't happen to you. Pitfall number five is watering the foliage or watering from the top. What you do not want to do is to water like this. 
When you water like this, not only can it lead to fungal disease, but the soil can splash from plant to plant, spreading the disease. It can also overwet the soil, which can cause fungus gnats to lay their eggs in the soil that can destroy the roots of your plants. What you want to do instead is bottom water. So you want to pour the water directly in the drip trays. And pour a couple inches of water in here. And what this does, it avoids the soil splash issue altogether, lets your plants be healthier, not near as much fungal disease will spread, and also really cuts down on the fungus gnats. Another huge advantage to bottom watering is that the soil will get fully saturated, which means that you don't have to water near as often. And by the way, Smart Pots made this very special breast cancer awareness one gallon fabric container, especially for our October Grow Your Groceries box. When you grab this box, you get it free with purchase. The theme is indoor garden mini veggies and herbs. You can get your indoor garden growing. You can get $5 off with the code mini veggies and gift boxes are available for you to honor someone who's impacted by breast cancer. I'm going to give you a little bonus tip here on feeding your plants. You want to feed your plants about once a week. You can do this during one of your regular watering sessions, and I like to use Vermistera Vitality. Not only does it have no odor, which is really important for indoor growing, but it really helps your plants be healthier. Healthier plants means less pests and less disease, which is always important inside. Really easy to do this. I'm just going to add this liquid fertilizer, and this is an organic fertilizer made from worm castings. A few squirts here into my little watering can, kind of stir it around, and then I'm going to pour it directly in the drip tray of my plant. It's really going to help your plants be nice and productive and be healthy inside during the winter time. So I'm going to allow my plants here to soak the water up with cow pots. It's super easy to tell when the pot is saturated. The cow pot will turn a dark brown color when it's nice and wet. Then I'm going to pour that water off or use it for another plant. Now something that's a really easy way to empty your drip trays in the indoor garden is to use one of these little turkey basters. Super handy, just sucks the water up, then you can squirt it directly in your watering can. That way you don't have to move your entire drip tray. Leave in the comments if you ever made any of these common watering mistakes, I know I have, and it could be very helpful to others. Thanks so much for watching, see you on the next video.